G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today we're going to be having a look at not necessarily a new plane that was added with patch 2.5, but we're going to have a look at an extra feature that was given to an existing aircraft. This particular plane is a bit of a struggle bus, I will have to admit, and I have been kind of frustrated playing it, and I'd just like to show you a little situation that kind of demonstrates exactly that. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, we're having a look at the FGR2. Now, this isn't particularly frustrating, the MiG-21 SMT getting shot down by the 20mm Vulcan cannon, but we have missile number one coming in very hot, and I'm about to be joined by a couple more missiles from a second MiG-21 BIS. So we have Missile 2 on the way, and we're expecting a third and a fourth, and it seems like we're going to be getting twins. As this one comes out, we're going to be receiving a new one very, very quickly. So there goes number four, coming out hot on our tail. Five is on its way, and I'm guessing six is going to be just as warm and hot. The point I'm making here is that the FGR2, it doesn't matter what you're going to give it, you could give it AIM-9Ls, you could give it AIM-9Xs if you really wanted to, but the at the end of the day, the plane's performance, how well it does in War Thunder, is going to be based on airframe, predominantly. And giving it flashing missiles, giving it flashing radar, giving it anything, any bells and whistles, is going to be nice, don't get me wrong. But at the end of the day, the only thing that is going to make a plane better than it actually is, or better than it was, is by giving it better armament, or by getting it something that complements its airframe, or alternatively just getting it a lighter airframe. The FGR2 is one of the heaviest jets in the game, and from what I know it is basically an F4, I believe it's an F4C, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I probably am mistaken, but let me know in the comments section below. The FGR2 is a very heavy boy. And the problem with it being a heavy boy is you're basically relegated to a support fighter, if you will. However, that doesn't stop you from pulling off a couple of extra little tricks. Now, I have been a little bit of a negative Nancy here, but I would like to sort of put forth a couple of solutions. Because I'm not really one to just sort of go on and talk about things without providing a solution, unless I'm genuinely stuck. And unlike Stepbro, I am not stuck here, so let's get into a couple of little things while this match decides it wants to load. So, the FGR2 is one of those planes that is, like I said, full of bells and whistles, but not exactly great in performance. Uh, we can take a couple of ideas and a couple of theories from a couple of other planes that share similar traits. Things like the P-47s. Things like, I guess, a couple of heavy fighters. Now, in this case, you might be giving an air spawn, or you might have a uh, pretty crappy climb rate, but have good guns and good energy retention, and the Phantom FGR2 is in a similar spot here. So, what do you do in, say, a P-47? Well, it's pretty obvious. You climb off to the side, you get above your opponents, and you work your way down. Now, whilst that doesn't quite apply the same way in jets, you do have a similar situation here. The trick with the FGR2 is not to take the front foot on a fight, and that makes me upset because I like taking the front foot, unfortunately. So the FGR2 doesn't exactly play to my style, but it's something that I basically have to live with and have to try and, and work around. And that's kind of what we're doing here, right? So what I'm doing here is I know that I've spawned in late, and what's happening here is that the battle is going to start happening, and I'm going to come in while the battle is sort of just getting on and just sort of starting. So what I need to do is basically wait for some targets to show up. Uh, I do have a radar, but I am getting a couple of different pings, and we don't have IFF, which means that we won't be able to distinguish friends from foes on our radar, so we're going to have to use our Mark 1 eyeball for that one. Now, I have spotted a couple of targets in the distance there that have been uh, sort of made apparent, or have been like spotted with the spotting system, by what I believe to be the SU-17. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just sort of gently make my way over to them. I'm not going to sort of dive right in because I know that something like that AV-8, for example, is going to pop up. Now, I try and get myself a little bit of a lock on him using the ACM mode, but unfortunately it doesn't quite have the range. I think it might have like an 8km range. I, I think so. Or a 6km range. I can't quite read. Um, I think it says... 9 on the little radar on my little preview window, but that's okay, so we'll just go off that roughly. Now, one of the things Pulse Doppler radar takes in into consideration 
is the shift that you're sort of moving along with as your radar sort of tracks targets or tracks objects um, and receives radar pings. Uh, if you've ever been for an ultrasound and you hear like that swishing sound, um, sometimes they, they do it for like your legs or something. Um, it's very common in obstetrics, so like ultrasounds of babies basically. Um, and that's often the point where the mother basically says, oh, is that my baby's heart? No, it's, it's actually their blood flow. So sorry to sort of remove that charming moment from you, but uh, yeah, it's, it's the baby's blood flow essentially. And basically what you're looking for here is movement in an otherwise sort of static space um, and so if your enemies I believe from memory are moving side to side you don't actually see the target on the radar you can't actually lock it it's sort of covered by ground noise and so what you have to do is you have to look for enemies coming either towards you or away from you at your sort of best case and this F4E here is a classic example and this is exactly what I want to show you the one kilometer sort of uh, warm-up time or distancing time for the AIM-7 is, is met and I managed to get the, the shot on target. And for me, this is the niche scenario that you can really make use of in your FGR2. A case where someone is either heading underneath you or is heading at low altitude and these sort of little niche cases are where the FGR2 shines. Now, unfortunately the FGR2 isn't going to be an all-rounder, it's not going to be meta-changing, and unfortunately it has proven to be a little bit frustrating, to be honest. But overall, you still have a couple of little neat things that you can pull out of a hat, as such. These sorts of situations are quite handy, they're, they're quite nice to have, and it's nicer to have a sort of extra little thing than to not have it, and so I welcome this change. Uh, I also welcome the addition of flares uh, and chaff being sort of bundled into one. Now, you can't really take your flares and take your chaff and just roll with both and get the best of both worlds. It, it doesn't work that way in this particular situation. But you have a trade-off, and if you want to be, you know, if you want to tail tailor your gameplay towards fending off against uh, semi-active radar homing missiles, then you can do that. Uh, and if you want to do the same for IR missiles, well, you can do that too, but you can't do both. And this MiG-21 BIS is going to learn the hard way that he can't deal with gun arenas. So, in this situation here is, it's basically a quintessential FGR2 situation. You're in an area where there are lots of distracted enemies and you have plenty of open targets that are relatively slow. I'm going to send an AIM-9D, which I, I wish it was an AIM-9G, but that's all we have to deal with. Um, unfortunately for me, I missed my shots on that MiG-21 BIS, but that's okay because I have another target that is sort of in front of me, and I can basically go for this Chinese F-104G. He's pretty slow, so long burst there of the uh, Burt, and he's gone. So, now I have a bunch of other distracted MiGs to deal with. This is basically easy pickings, and this is where the FGR2 also shines. So if you're having a little bit of trouble with the FGR2, uh, its new Pulse Doppler radar is nice. It's not going to win you any awards though, unfortunately. It's going to be used in niche situations, um, and things like a MiG-21 BIS are basically going to outdo you at every turn. However, it is very, very nice to have some lovely little missiles at your disposal. Well, look at this, I can lock this, this MiG-21 at uh, all these low sort of altitudes without any of the problem. Now, the flares and the chaff are going to be a little bit annoying, but unfortunately that's just the nature of the beast. It gives them something that they can uh, counter you against. And of course, with the MiG-21 not really looking out for that last missile, I can get myself a pretty neat little kill. Now, I'm basically spamming AIM-7s here, I really shouldn't be. The target in this case is needing to be led a little bit further than I can physically do it. And so, in this case, we're just going to give chase and perhaps spam, but it's okay because I have a bunch of uh, allied me uh, team members right behind me, and so I have plenty of opportunity to, to do stuff. Now, this MiG-21 decides to use his chaff, and well, well used chaff in that case, so I'm pretty sure he's got a mix. So, but um, it's okay because, in this case, I have plenty of friendlies nearby, and it's only a matter of time before... Yeah. He doesn't watch where he's going, rips his wing, and that's game over. So, the FGR2 is, like I said, still a bit of a struggle bus, 
Still not really going to be winning any awards, but I'll tell you what, having a Pulse Doppler radar is a really good start. This also gives rise for things like uh, M54 Phoenixes to, to come to the game eventually, with things like, uh, I believe the F-14 was the first to field them, or was at least purpose-built to field them. Um, or I'd, I'd like to know what else sort of had the M54, um, but all this sort of look-down, shoot-down technology is really nice, because having the opportunity for a little bit of extra gameplay, plus, of course, the give-and-take mechanic of flares and chaff, gives the, the Phantoms a bit more of a new lease on life at that lower tier, um, but it also gives other other jets something, I guess, to watch out for. So you're not really sort of losing out on anything, but I tell you what, it's a little interesting precursor to what could come. And for me, that's where the, the intrigue really happens. Aside from all the issues I've been having, the focusing, people headhunting me, server issues, everything like that, the FGR2 is interesting, and I think that's the best way to leave today. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I really appreciate your time. Leave a like and a comment for the algorithm. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.